In the last section, we saw how important it is to thoroughly prepare for the health and safety inspection. We also saw that much of that preparation should be done weeks before the inspection actually takes place. In this section, we'll be giving you some guidance on how to go about conducting the inspection. We won't be going into great detail because not only does every location differ, but covering every point you should check would require an entire programme on its own. What we will be doing is offering tips and hints on how to make your inspections effective and thorough. The time has come for you to carry out your safety inspection. Everyone who might be affected has been informed and reminded closer to the time. Adequate time has been set aside for you to do it and, if necessary, cover has been arranged. Of course, there are still one or two final preparations you should make. You should read through the last safety inspection report. When you carry out the inspection, you'll want to look for points noted in the last report to ensure that they've been addressed and that they've not arisen again. And look again at any recent accident reports. You'll want to make sure whatever caused them has been put right. Remember, by speaking to your colleagues just before the inspection, you'll find out about actual or potential hazards which may have recently arisen or which may even have been missed in previous inspections. Sometimes people take even serious hazards for granted or grow accustomed to them being that way. Involving staff not only raises awareness of safety issues, it also provides extra pairs of eyes to help you spot any problems. Having completed all your preparations, you're ready to begin the health and safety inspection. As we said earlier, it's not possible or within the scope of this video to tell you precisely what to look for or even how to go about it. But there are certain guidelines and the first is to be methodical. Start by dividing your school or college up into separate areas according to the location and conduct your inspection by area. In a large secondary school, you could inspect classrooms first then the science areas, the practical areas, the sports facilities, the learning resource centre and so on. In primary schools and other workplaces you'll have a different plan. Then take each main area and divide it into logical subdivisions. For instance, the science area could be divided into the physics, biology and chemistry labs, chemical and equipment stores, corridors and general areas and so on. Using this method will ensure that you inspect each area thoroughly and at the end of the inspection, your report will be better organised and easier to collate. Your school will have floor plans to help you map out where, how and when you inspect. The second tip is don't rush things. You should be given enough time to complete the inspection without rushing. And if you do rush, you won't be either thorough or methodical. Some potential safety hazards are less obvious than others. You should remember that your title is Health and Safety Representative, which means that you're also concerned with the occupational health of your members. Hi Hayley, I'm doing my first health and safety inspection mm -hmm. and um, I know that you're pregnant and I just need to ask you a few questions. Okay. Are, are you still doing playground duty? No, no, I don't do it anymore. I've been taken off that completely. No. Oh, good stuff. And um, are you having enough time off for all your appointments that you need to go to? Yeah, all I'd need to do is like, come in in the morning, just give them plenty of notice, like a day or so, so I'm not leaving them in the lurch. But other than that, I'm always good to go whenever I need to go. Like. Oh, good stuff. And... Um, what about carrying boxes and things? No, and don't do any of that anymore, yeah. nothing, no. No, lifting tables or benches, nothing like that. Somebody else will do it or I can always, you know, get some of the bigger children to come and give me a hand or something, lifting stuff, things like that. Right. Have they done a risk assessment on you? Do yes, you know? yes. I've been taken away from some of the more violent children, so I'm not surrounded, putting myself in a situation where I'm vulnerable, really. And I've always got somebody in classroom with me in case there's a problem, so I... If, Oh yeah, I needed to walk out, or they needed to walk out and go and fetch somebody as backup for me. Okay, so you're happy with everything that's been done yeah, for yeah, you so very far? Yeah, happy. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Well, if anything changes or you have any problems, come and see me, won't you? Okay, will do. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Remember to check on the causes of previous accidents. As we said earlier, they should have been rectified. It's as well to make sure, and some faults have a habit of reoccurring. Some areas of your school pose unique or special types of hazards you should pay particular attention to these. If you're not sure about the requirements for such things as the storage of hazardous substances, don't hesitate to ask for advice and guidance from your local association health and safety coordinator or local secretary. Or go to the health and safety executive website and look at the COSH regulations, or indeed advice on any aspect of health and safety. 
The temperature and ventilation of classrooms and other areas is an important factor in health and safety. The NAS UWT is concerned that the working environment is conducive to learning and therefore that the temperatures and airflow are appropriate and comfortable. It's not always a matter of rooms being too cold or too hot. Apart from the obvious physical discomfort, possible negative consequences can range from an inability to operate equipment and machinery safely to unacceptably high noise levels from machinery or music rooms, drowsiness from excessive temperatures, distraction, and open windows causing considerable background noise and stress. The safety inspection is the most important part of your role as a safety representative. For whatever reason you conduct one, the result of an accident or dangerous occurrence, a change in the conditions of work, or just a regular termly inspection, it's essential that it's done thoroughly. The union, for example, is at the very forefront of tackling bullying and harassment, including that driven by prejudice and cyberbullying. But we cannot address these issues if they're hidden from view. Get those extra pairs of eyes working for you, and when you start the inspection, be methodical. Divide the site into areas, then divide those into smaller areas. Inspect each area completely before moving on to the next. Oh, yeah. I'm doing my first health and safety inspection. Do you mind if you have on the ground? Feel free. Thank you. Fine. We'll call it replying to an email. I'll write that on the board. Replying to an email. Plugs, which I thought we were trying to get rid of those. We are. Um, unfortunately, we're, um, we've only got the one PowerPoint behind there at the minute, so we are having some more I'll raise that fitted. Okay. Okay. How do you get that box down? Um, good question. I, we've had um, work in the Heights training, and so I get the appropriate equipment to get them down. If I can't find it, I'll speak to the caretaker, and okay. she'll come along and help me. Uh, Get stuff down as and when I need it. So it's not generally a problem. Do you use it often? Not very often now, that's why it's right at the top okay. out of the way. Oh, okay, thank you. No problem at all. If you try to check all the electrics on the site, all the fire extinguishers and so on, the inspection will take much longer and you'll be exhausted. Don't rush it. Remember, you are legally entitled to take as much time as is needed to do the inspection properly. Pay particular attention to obvious and special risks such as the use and storage of hazardous substances and the presence of asbestos. If you're unsure about this area or any other aspect of your duties, contact your health and safety coordinator or local secretary. Remember that the legislation covers health, safety and welfare. Hazards are not confined to physical dangers and the occupational health of your colleagues may be at risk as much as their physical safety, so it's just as important. When you conduct your first safety inspection, be prepared to take somebody with you. It's nice to have somebody to act as a sounding board and an extra pair of eyes. It could be the safety rep from another union, a colleague, or somebody else from your local NAS UWT association. Indeed, one of the branch officers will probably come along if they are asked and support you. Hi Pippa, how's it going? Fine, thanks, John. I was noticed on the machines on the floor there's no lines painted. Well spotted, as you know, it's a new building. Uh, we've got some people coming in, not this Thursday, but the Thursday after, to put the lines down, and then it will be okay for that. Okay, so well spotted. When you've completed the inspection, you should make out your report, and that's the subject of the next section.